We had a question this week about how we assess hip and turn rotation in our athletes. Um, so I want to take you to two separate screens that we used to do that. Um, the first one is done in the seated position. We want to make sure the athlete is up nice and tall with good posture. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to separate him out from the table with his lower leg just enough so that that, uh, that lower leg is not in any way touching the table. Okay, so he's going to be nice and tall. All we're going to do is come right down here and take him into some hip and turn rotation. And we'll go as far as he can go without the, uh, the hip hiking off the table. Okay, so that's a sign that they're, they're compensating with some lumbar spine movement. So how we usually assess that is just take the goniometer, bring it right here. So right about there would be 45 degrees. Um, as a general thumb, we want a minimum of 35 degrees um, in our general fitness population. And to be honest, we actually want a, a little bit more 40 to 45 bare minimum in our rotational sport athletes. So um, hip and turn rotation is really, really important, not just in rotational sport athletes who are trying to you know, protect their back and protect their knee health. But it's also actually really important for, for people who are just in a general weight training population because you do need a certain amount of hip and turn rotation to effectively go into hip flexion. So squatting patterns and, and also the way that it affects single leg movements. So, um, something we really want to you know, take advantage of. Um, one quick way that we'll use to assess for this, um, I rarely use this one test in isolation, but it's a little bit easier than you know, using a goniometer, is just to put the athlete in the prone position so the hips are in more of a neutral position, a little bit more extended. And what we'll do is we'll take them in that prone position, pull the knees together, and then just move them out into some hip and turn rotation. Okay, so with this one, as a general thumb, you'll get slightly better measurements, or slightly higher measurements, I should say, in the prone position. Um, because really what we're doing is we're kind of separating out the muscular and the capsular. Um, checking in prone is a good way to see if you're dealing with some kind of capsular restriction. So um, this is a great one for just, if you want to quickly assess a lot of guys, see if there's a hip and turn rotation deficit. Um, you can also check knee flexion, so quad length, rectus femoris length in this position. Um, what you'll very, very commonly see is if I'm dealing, say, with a, a right-handed pitcher, this left side would be his front leg. It's not uncommon at all to see excellent uh, hip and turn rotation on that back leg side and then see someone who's very, very stiff on the front. Um, and, and where that becomes a big problem is if I don't have good hip and turn rotation on my front leg, I'll tend to fly open earlier when I throw. And where that becomes an issue is if I'm flying open early, my arm will trail behind the body. So I'll be out of that scapular plane where we know we're a little more shoulder friendly. So I'll be in a little bit more hyper abduction. So in a situation like that, we really want to address that front leg hip and turn rotation deficit. Um, check the assess and correct DVD set for some corrective exercises to go right in line with these assessments.